there, folks, and welcome to the Anti Heroes Podcast with your host, Zach Blair. I am Zach Blair. How is everything going with you? Uh, I'm good. I don't know when these are going to come out or how they are going to do, but this uh, that I'm recording right now is January of 2024. Um, because of the way I've recorded these, I've recorded a lot of this season before, and then now this, and we've had a new year, and we've done a bunch of stuff. I am getting ready to go to Australia with my band Rise Against. And so when this airs, I will have done that. Hopefully it was a success. Hopefully it did well. We're going with the band Blink-182. So it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big hurrah, a big happening. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll report back. I'll tell you how it's going. Uh, today we have things I love on here. We have a bassist. We have a, uh, a female, which I love to, uh, you know, Jesus Christ, the whole guitar and, and it can be such a male dominated um, uh, situation that I love to have other voices on this podcast. So uh, I'm very happy that not only is it a bassist, it is a female bassist and is also an old friend from Austin, Texas. She now lives in Los Angeles and you'll hear about that. This is Alex Gehring from the band Ringo Death Star. Um, they're a fantastic band. Uh, I, I even just I was texting Alex that they remind me of if my bloody Valentine were from Texas, which I don't think I could laud somebody greater than that because I love my bloody Valentine and always have. Um, I would say up there with one of my favorites and, um, and you know, they're from Texas. So there's a special place in my heart. Uh, shoe gaze and post hardcore folks. That's, that's, that's my love language. Those two. So uh, we have a great conversation. Um, you know, again, I, I, I've, I've, I've known Alex for quite a while. My wife has known Alex for, uh, for even longer, and they're even closer. And she's just a wonderful person, and what a wonderful band. Uh, we talk about the pantheon of great female rock bassists, and I don't think that that is um, sort of given enough attention either. But man, if you think about it, think of all the great bands that had amazing rock or punk or or whatever you want to call it bass players you know we talk about some of it but it's kira rosler from black flag it's tina weymouth from from uh, uh talking heads kim gordon from sonic youth kim coletta from jawbox uh the list goes on man uh darcy retsky from smashing pumpkins um and now you know we we, we bring this up too but paz lynn chanton i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly who is now in the pixies uh, but Kim Deal, Jesus Christ. I mean, Kim Deal from the Pixies. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I could go on. But, man, what a and, – and in my opinion, you know, a, a sort of an unsung hero, I think Alex Gehring here today that we talked to. Um, and so if you don't know Alex's music, hopefully this will introduce you to to her and her her great bands. She talks about another band that she's she's had. Uh, and she and for the last two years where she just sings uh, called Nuclear Daisies and you should check that out as well so we will find out what she's up to and I'm going to shut up and get into my interview with Alex Gehring <laughs> So we've known each other a bit for a minute from from Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. And it's we were just talking world. <laughs> yeah, and, and you live in LA now. I do. Yeah. What's 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 so if, for those uninitiated? This is Alex Gehring. Am I pronouncing Gehring right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've known you this long, and I should know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> but uh, Alex plays bass and sings for the band Ringo Death Star. Uh, what do you guys have anything coming up? Or are you kind of what's going on with the band? You know, we don't really, I'm dying to get back into the studio. I love recording. It's like one of my yeah. favorite parts about being in a band. Yeah. Um, but we have like 5 billion demos floating around in our like Dropbox right now. Mm -hmm. And we just need to like hunker down and get in there. But both Elliot and Daniel are dads now and they have real jobs and, you know, they're family. Yeah. So it's a little harder than it used to be when we were like, 
20 and had nothing else except the band going on and we were just yeah. like we could just like be in the studio all day and all night all the time so now it's yeah. like we have very rigorous family schedules and we can only get in at like tuesday at 9 p.m and right. so Hopefully, and we'll have some new stuff coming your way. Are those guys still in Austin, or are they? Yeah. Uh, they're both still in Austin. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that's another element, added element when there's it's long distance. You know, when people are sort of spread out and it gets yeah. it gets rough. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely weird being away from them. I think the timing is as good as it would ever be, especially because they both have kids and have both, uh, you know, Daniel's almost done with school to become a therapist and Elliot's oh, wow. a professor um, at ACC now. And wow, uh, this is the best timing for me to not be around just because their schedules are so hectic now. Right. Wow. Yeah. God, don't they have, they have real jobs. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me take me back. So did the, you you were just saying that you were born and raised in Austin, and I made the remark that that's like a shooting star because everybody that lives here, it's like it's becoming in L.A. or New York or something where people aren't from here. You know, they 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 move here, and all of us like-minded people from Texas move here to Austin. Um, but uh, so did those guys? You started the band in Dallas, I mean, in Austin, and was that twenty years ago? Oh my, almost. Jeez. Um, I joined the band. 2007 or 8 I cannot fully remember I graduated high school in 2006 and I joined like right after that so wow. somewhere around 2007 or 2008 um, and uh, yeah Elliot started the band um, and he and Daniel met in um, Beaumont uh, oh. but Elliot started the band and had a little bit of like a lineup changeover trying to find people that really wanted to play with him and um, I met him randomly through a mutual friend and he was like, well, I'm looking for a bass player. And I was like, Oh, I play bass. And he's like, you can audition for me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like 18 at the time. Yeah. I'd never really played in a, I had like high school bands and I went to some garage and played and <laughs> he was right. like, these are kind of hard songs. And I was like, okay, I'm down to like try and figure it out. And then afterwards he was like, all right, you can be in the band. And I was like, okay. And I did not realize that that would um, completely change my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's and crazy it, that I've been in this band for so long. When I tell people, I'm like, it's been like almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm old. No, you're not. I was just <laughs> remarking that you said you graduated high school in 2000. What did you say? Six? Six. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I didn't realize. I mean, you're young. Like, that's crazy. I just, <laughs> shit. Yeah, you're young. That's nuts. Oh, thank I, you. Yeah, bad. Um, that's, that's crazy. Well, and so this is the only band you've ever been in? Or have you, been, have you done other projects and things? I've done some other projects, and I'm in another band right now called Nuclear Daisies. But I'm just right. singing in that band, which is oh. so weird for me because Ringo has been my, you know, I've done other bands. Is like I'm just kind of helping out, stepping in as a guitarist or bassist. Uh, yeah. But Ringo's been my only real band that I've been in for such a long time and have been a songwriter for. The other yeah. bands were kind of just like more session work in a way. And then Nuclear Daisies is new for me. Um, I also get to songwrite for this band, but um, I don't play bass. I just yeah. sing, which has been really enjoyable, but has been such a weird thing for me figuring out what my stage presence is like. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what do I do with my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, yeah, like because learn some cool TikTok dance moves or something. Right. Well, because we we hide behind those things. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And your totally. body is so postured with this holding on to this thing. Yeah. I, it's like I my safety blanket on stage. Yeah. So without it, I'm like, oh my gosh, people are looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could. I think it would be such an uncomfortable situation. Because when I have like spoken yeah. to to people for whatever, you know, paneling or something like that. God forbid if I'm not, you know, sitting down, at least if you're sitting down, you're only seeing from your chest up or whatever. But yeah, yeah it, it, I do get real self-conscious and you do start thinking of like, what am I going to do with my hands? Like, what am yes. I doing? It has taken me, I've been doing this band for, I want to say maybe two years, a year and a okay. half at this point. Um, and it has been, has taken me a long time to start to feel comfortable yeah. on stage without having a bass in my hands and trying to figure out what to do. And 
I like can't even do karaoke because I have such terrible stage fright and people yeah. are like, how do you have stage fright? You've been playing in a band for so long, but I feel like having the safety net of my bass on me songs that I've rehearsed over and over again yeah. makes me feel a little more comfortable. But I can't do karaoke because I'm just like, oh, it's just me and a microphone yeah. and everyone's just looking at me. And so at first, Nuclear Daisies was like a bit of a, oh, my God, what yeah. have I gotten myself into? But I'm I'm slowly sinking Good. into it. So. Well, there's also something to be said about the people you're on stage with, like the band. Yeah. And there's really, seven you know... of us. So it's, oh, like, wow. <laughs> it's crowded. I'm surrounded by my buds, which makes it a lot easier. Right. But it's also very different from Ringo because there's only three of us in that band. So... We did our first tour last year, and it was my first time touring with so many people. And I was like, oh, this is a different yeah. experience. Yeah, that is a different experience. Is that band based out of LA? Out of Austin. Oh, it's out of Austin too. How did I not know that shit? I mean, I, that name sounds familiar, but did the tour go, <laughs> did the tour go well? It did, yeah. We, um, we were opening for Portrayal of Guilt. Okay. Uh, and they're our record label as well. Um, and I was a little bit nervous because they are like hardcore. I don't, I'm so terrible with music genres. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to <laughs> miss yeah. genre them, but um, I think they're more of like, you know, it's like screaming and like yeah. really heavy guitar, which is not what we are. And I was nervous that we would not be well received. Um, sure. But I think having them as our record label and having them kind of be like vouching for us in that way people were actually super receptive to it. So I was wow. really pleasantly surprised. So that's yeah. great. I've heard that name too. I'm sort of out of it as well with like, you I'm, know. I'm so bad. If I wasn't in it and like exposed to it, I yeah. would be totally lost. I usually have friends tell me when something else, some other band is cool, like we, like Mike Weeby and you know, we know a lot of the same people, you and me. So it's like, yeah. you know, people that are hipper and like sort of plugged in go, no, you should be checking out this band. Like, oh, okay, cool. Otherwise I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, oh, I know about it because my friend's in it. But Yeah, 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 totally. I wonder <laughs> I if I know like, people, if I know people in Nuclear Daisies, I must, I, I would think. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, because it's like all people who are in a bunch of other bands. Okay. So, yeah, it's a, to... a bit of a super group. And Daniel from Ringo plays drums in it as well. So oh, it's okay. nice I have like a... Like a <laughs> and buzz. Elliot sometimes does our sound, which is so funny. So. <laughs> Wow. It's like I couldn't fully leave Ringo Death Star. I right. like, still have them tethered to me. Yeah, which is good. Um, <laughs> so how did you, let's go way back. Like, How did you start playing bass? So what made you, what gave you the impetus to start doing that in the first place? Um, my stepdad, um, Jason, he is one of my favorite humans in the world. He always had an acoustic guitar around the house yeah. and would play. And I just loved it when he would play and I really wanted to learn. It was really hard for me, guitar. I really struggled to feel like I could hold down the strings and it hurt my fingers yeah. and I had a lot of frustration with it. And he was like, well, maybe you would enjoy playing bass. Maybe that'd be a little bit easier for you. And I didn't even really, at that point, I think I was like 11 or 12. I was like, I don't even really know what that is. Yeah. Like I've heard of it, but, um, and so he, got me as a surprise for Christmas. I, you know, once he mentioned this to me, I was like, well, yeah, I like did all this research on bass players. And I was like, oh yeah, bass is so cool. I definitely want to be a bassist. And um, as a surprise for Christmas, he got me a bass guitar and my family was so broke. I did not, I asked for one, but my mom was like, there's just no way, you know, yeah. there's four daughters. And she was like, we cannot afford a bass guitar. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then it was, Christmas, it was the last gift all four of us girls were opening and they'd hit it in the garage. And this whole Christmas, I was just like, I'm definitely not getting a guitar, but it's okay. <laughs> and then they bring it out and I have these embarrassing photos of me, like 12 years old, braces, holding this bass, just sobbing, crying. That's so cool though, I love that. <laughs> it was so sweet. And my dad was friends with this guy named John Moyer, who, um, was a bass player and offered to give me bass lessons oh, and wow. he would teach me on an acoustic bass and he was like you have to play with your fingers and I was like okay and I only took a couple of lessons from him because he ended up joining the band Disturbed so that's oh I, wait I, I know John Moyer <laughs> yeah that's my claim to fame I'm he, like yeah. he used to be in a band called Soak from oh. San Antonio 
Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I knew that guy in the 90s. I know John. And then yeah. John will sometimes, I'll run into him at Black Swan Yoga, like doing yoga. Oh, amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Well, yeah. So I... he was my original bass teacher. I wow. took a couple of lessons with him, and um, he's the reason that I play with my fingers. Because um, he kind of struck with fear, and he was like, you have yeah. to. That's what bassists do. And I was like, okay. Um, and so... Um, I only took a few lessons from him and then I was just addicted and I would take it with me everywhere and I would try and play along to songs on the radio and learn wow. my favorite songs and yeah. Wow, that's so cool. What was that early bass? What was it? Do you remember? Oh my God. It was called a Playmate and I don't Playmate. know who the brand was. I'm, I'm sure it was like a Sears brand or something. Right. I, I don't even know where it is at this point. I think it's in the attic of my Austin house, but so it was, cool. you know, just some weird off brand guitar. Right. Right. Who were your early people? Like who was your, like the, the, your influences, who were the people that were sort of exciting you? So I obviously got really into like female bass players. Sure. Sure. And, um, I was such a huge Pixies fan. They were like my number yeah. one favorite band. And I thought that Kim Deal was like the absolute coolest. She is. Doll. She and still so is. I feel like it, she absolutely still is, but she was like my, this is what I want to be her. And, um, and, uh, Kim Gordon. Yeah. Of course. And yep. I still, I'm just like, oh, they're the coolest. They but are. especially starting out at that young age, looking at them and just being like, oh, yeah. They're like, yeah. They were That's my That's so cool. Yeah, I mean with those two, but then there's like, you know, Kira Rosler from Black Flag. Yes. Uh Tina uh, Weymouth from uh, I was about to say, yeah, Tina Weymouth, yeah. You know, so I saw somebody that had a shirt. You know how it's like the last names of people like such and such and such and such and it was right. all female. It was like Weymouth and and uh Deal and you know, it was the 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 sort of Mount Rushmore of great female rock basses. And I was like, yeah, I didn't Darcy, talk to him. Darcy yeah, Darcy. yeah. Oh God, her long blonde hair. And yeah. She just so ethereal on stage. I was like, oh. Yeah, she was so great. Yeah, that's a great time to sort of like, for a young female bassist, you have so many, you know, there, at that point, you know, if it was like, I'm, I'm guessing it was late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. Yeah, that's a great time. Yeah. Cause they're all, yeah, yeah, that's, that's so cool. And you know, the, 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 the woman that, um, that replaced Kim Deal, I don't know her, I, I forget, I'm going to mispronounce her last name, but I think it's Paz. It's Paz Lachanton. Lin, I think something Lachanton. Yeah. She's also pretty great. She's yeah. really great. And when we toured with, um, we toured with the Smashing Pumpkins and Nicole Fiorentino was playing bass for them at the time. And she is, amazing too oh, wow and i run into wow. i ran into her recently in la and i was like oh my god it's so cool so to cool. get to run into you in the wild you know their basis now is um peter hook peter hook his, you know yeah his son I'm, yeah yeah i've gotten to meet him several times he's so sweet oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah. that's so cool it's just like that's his dad there was also um Oh God! Uh, from I was a huge Jawbox fan, and Kim Coletta, her the Jawbox mm -hmm. is bassist, also amazing. Anyway, off the subject. Uh, <laughs> so your first like real bass? Did you was that during high school? Was that you know what was that? I got it as my graduation gift. My stepdad amazing. Jason got it for me, and it's the bass I still play today. It's the really? only one I've ever really had. It's the just a Fender Jazz bass and Sunburst and. At this point, because I've had it since I graduated high school at 17, it has, it has destroyed this wow. poor thing. All the tuning pegs are like completely wonky Bent. from it yeah. just falling over a million times. And it's got chunks of wood taken out of it. I've got like old stickers that have barely stuck on and yeah. it's exactly how I'd want it to be. And it's really funny because we played a, a Fender gig recently yeah, and as a part of our payment, they were like, you can pick out a guitar. And I was Whoa. like, Oh my God. And you know, they had all these amazing guitars you could choose from. And Martin was like, well, what are you going to get? And I was like, I know this is so lame, but I think I'm just going to get my exact bass. Yeah. And I did like exact it's nicer. Like mine, yeah. I think is like made in Mexico. It's yeah. deep to shit. And this one is like 
pristine, gorgeous, wow. brand new. And I'm like afraid. I'll, I don't think I'll ever tour with it. I'm too scared. But I was like, yeah. <laughs> I love my bass so much. I literally just got like a newer, nicer version of it instead of branching out and trying something. I think that's great, though. <laughs> I think that because like. I get dorky and I think I feel like I need certain shit and I go and get certain shit and then I'm like, ah, I didn't need that. And then I get rid of it. You know what? It's that constant. And I wish, I so wish, because I'm usually just sticking with the same like that, like the things that I know and I love. Yeah. And I wish I didn't give a shit or or wonder, you know, because I always end up going back. So I I love that and I respect that. I respect yeah. I respect that. Is it the same color, or same everything? <laughs> Yeah, same exact wow. everything. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just uh it doesn't have chunks of wood taken out of it. <laughs> yeah. Well good. I mean that's that's great though, you know. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Do you so you guys started touring um was it fairly early like quick quickly? Yeah. We yeah. started touring really quickly. Um one of the first labels we signed to was our Japanese label who found us through MySpace. This is how long wow. ago this was. They found us through MySpace. And um, so we were really fortunate to get to start doing Japanese tours pretty early on. And um, But yeah, we toured all over. Wow. Um, from a very early age, early in our band's age. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at that time, you know, we didn't have families and real jobs we were right. all working like retail or what you know waiting tables so we were just like screw let's it go. let's go live in a van for a couple of months yeah and austin was still relatively cheap back then oh too. my god so yeah. cheap back then yeah, yeah my rent was like 300 bucks or something so yeah was <laughs> when i first moved here it was like 350 or something like that and yeah. now it's just like holy shit you couldn't do Insane. anything yeah. yeah you couldn't do anything like that here right now um but yeah, we toured a lot and I used to feel like, man, I feel like touring's the only thing I'm like really good at <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Well, you get I mean, the rhythm and you're just like, this is just the way of life that I've kind of weirdly perfected because you exactly. do it so much with the same people. You fall into such a rhythm. Then then when I would come home, I would have post tour depression. I was just like, who yeah. am I when I'm not on tour? Like, I don't yeah. want to go work my retail job. Like, what do I, I what do I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's it that you just said everything that's, that's been my entire life. You know, yeah. it's, I, it's been, I've been doing this shit 30 years now and it's like, yeah. you come home and you really doubt, you don't know who you are. You know, I don't know what I offer a relationship. I don't know what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, thankfully, you know, my wife who you know very well is, hasn't left me, but I don't think I'm much of a functional adult. You know, it really I, I, is. yeah, you're just like, I, who, who I love to be is the person I am on tour. That's where I feel right. my most comfortable and excited and passionate. And it's really hard when you're doing that for a good chunk of time. And then you're ripped back out of that. And then you're like, yep. okay, got to wake up at eight 30 and get to your job and totally. do customer service. And, yep. and you're just like, Oh my gosh! Nobody Get me back on the road. <laughs> no, nothing gives you that that case of the fuckets more than that. Yeah. You know, where you're just like, I don't fucking care about no, what's going so on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, because it is such a yes. You know, I, I guess to the layman, they would say, oh well, of course it's great being you know traveling and seeing the world, and it's not all great. It's just it's hard. You're, it's it really is hard. hard. It is hard and, and people sort of, you know, oh, boo hoo or whatever, but it's like, no, it is hard and not everyone can do it. Don't, not everyone can do it for extended periods of time like you have. Um, it definitely takes a certain type of person, but then once you are doing it and once you've gotten past the few year mark, you're right. You, that's all you do. That's who you mm -hmm. are. It's not just an occupation. It's just who you fucking are, you know? And I think that people who don't, tour have a different idea of what it's actually like and like you said they're like oh it's so cool you get to travel around and see the world and mm -hmm. i'm like the way that we tour we're you know we can't afford days off we're not staying in hotels we are sleeping on people's floor or in our van like yeah. it's not a tour bus and we are literally in one city 
sometimes you have to drive through the night to make it to the next city. Absolutely. There's no like, we're going to go check out the museums and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Every once in a while, maybe if you have a little extra time, but it's like, we had no money, <laughs> no extra yeah. time. You're just like running on fumes and mm -hmm. adrenaline. <laughs> so yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I, I've been all over, but I like we went to Paris several times and I was like, I just saw the Eiffel Tower through the van. I was like, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's check it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I did a lot more of that than, you know, Rise Against does well and blah, blah, blah. But like I did that yeah. way more. You know, this this has been 17 years and then Guar was like a bus, but it was not good. You know, yeah. it was it was definitely no no days off as well. But there is something about that, what I call real touring, um, <laughs> that is also, there's just nothing else in the world like it, you know? There really isn't. There I mean, really isn't. And I'm such a creature of comfort now. I Maybe my old age or COVID did that to me. And I think like, oh my gosh, how did I used to do that? But not only did I used to do that, but I loved it. Yeah. I loved it after a show being on the mic being like does anyone have a floor we can sleep on yep. and it would be some weird party house and i'd be sleeping on beer soaked carpet and yep. waking up at the crack of dawn to make it to whatever the next city was hung yep. over as hell like literally just getting crackers from 7-eleven and like whatever your like drink tickets could mm -hmm. get you in beer <laughs> and just doing that for months at a time i'm yeah. like how did i do that but i did it and i loved it and then you loved so it. it's well, just been a while since i really toured like that you're in your 20s and it's like there's no quality of life let's face it you know yeah. i didn't give a shit about what i ate and I, all i ate was after show pizza or subway yeah, or whatever the fuck yeah. it was you know was it was terrible then. <laughs> it's terrible and whatever maybe they left backstage like a hummus tray or whatever oh, the fuck yeah. it, yeah, you know, that, <laughs> it's been sitting out for hours yeah, oh, yeah that, had that, many. <laughs> that local grocery store vegetable tray or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. it was yeah yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, but i wouldn't trade it for the world you know and, and but i definitely knew people back then and that had done the same thing and and like started it and were not cut out for it and yeah. fucking hated it you know yeah not just not into it and it, it, it'll test you, you know? It will test you. But you know what's so funny is, you know, we've toured like that for so long. It had been a minute since we'd really toured. Ringo did a tour May of last year, mm -hmm. three weeks with Pleasure Venom. And I was just like, okay, I got to psych myself up. I got to get back into this mindset of sleeping on floors and staying out late. Like I've really gone into my grandma era since COVID. And yeah. we get out on the road and I'm asking people if we can sleep on their floors or people are just like coming up to us since we've done enough touring at this point. We have kind of like people we usually stay with sure. in certain sure. cities all over. But the cool thing was is that I feel like our fans have aged with us. And so we were staying with these people, but now they're married and they have toddlers mm -hmm. and they're waking up and they're making us breakfast and we're staying in their guest rooms. And I was yeah. just it's great. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. It's like I used to sleep on your floor when it was a party house. Like, yeah. And now yeah. I'm here with your beautiful wife and your kid and you're making me breakfast. Like, this oh, yeah. is amazing. Yeah, so. your quality of life matches my quality of life. <laughs> We're going to go watch Netflix and stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. That's great. And it's funny because almost everybody I talk to on here, we share this thing, you know. And it's And I say it all the time and I feel like a broken record on here, but it's – it's this common bond that, you know, it's somebody that you might not know very well. You know, some of the times, more often the cases, I've just met this person. But we sort of have this um, vernacular already uh, and this shared life experience, you know, this yeah. thing. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I on the mic said, do you have a place we can stay or whatever it might be, you know. And, and when you're living by the seat of your pants like that, um, and it's all for the same the, the the same common goal of we're just trying to make art you know really we just want you to hear our stuff there is something about that that conditions you as a human being to to uh to another person you know mm -hmm. and and to to uh I, I just find it so endearing when somebody's been through that i automatically if it was like a social function i just want to go to the person that we have that experience of so we can talk you know yeah because we already have something in common you know? yeah it's a weird experience, man. It's a weird it thing to put yourself through. A very unique experience. <laughs> yeah. 
is you drive 17 hours through the night and sometimes you're playing to no one, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's I've those just nights. Been those shows. Yeah. And it's the worst. Did you also tour with the toadies? No, we were offered, I don't remember if it was a full tour or like maybe just some Texas states potentially, yeah. but we were offered something with them a while back, but it, it I don't remember why it fell through, but for My some reason it didn't. My brother is their bassist and he, oh, cool. yeah. And I was telling him, I was like, oh, cause I've just started having bass players on here and, and he was my first and, you know, and I was like, I'm having another bassist. I go, that's my friend Alex Scaring from the band Rigno Destor. And he was like, I think we toured together. And I was like, I don't think you did. I would have known because she's been a friend of Sessie and I's for a really long time. He's like, no, dude, I think we did. And I was like, mm. I don't think it, it was it was floating in the ether, but for yeah. whatever reason, the timing wasn't working out with okay. whatever. That would have been a cool tour. It would have um, been a cool tour. Oh my God, yeah. maybe it can still happen. <laughs> yeah, they just recorded with Steve Albini, so that record will be out this year sometime, so, which should have happened a long time ago, you know? Um, anyway, so yeah, hopefully that will happen. Um, you know, I ask everybody, have with if with all the touring, you've already answered your your question about the bass, but have you had anything else get stolen? It's something I call the one that got away, or you had to hawk, or an amp, or cat, anything. You know, I'm going to knock on wood right now. I do not know how, gear-wise, I've never had anything stolen. No and it is an insane miracle for the amount of time that we have been touring, leaving our shit in our crappy van. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, it blows my mind. Um, the only thing I've had stolen <clears throat> was my luggage, um, oh. which was <laughs> really difficult for me because it was at the beginning of, we were doing a a U.S. tour that we were then going to fly to Europe, do a European tour, fly back to the U.S. and finish the tour. Wow. It was at the beginning of that. And of course, I had packed all my cool vintage. I had all mm -hmm. these awesome band tees, vintage dresses. I worked in vintage, so I just, you know, I was bringing all my coolest shit for this tour. And it happened in Portland. So within like the first week of our tour, I had my bag in the van. It got stolen. And I was like, I literally have no clothes left for the rest of this, like, however long this tour was, another month and a half or something. Holy and shit. I posted, Daniel got his stuff stolen too, but I posted on Instagram just being like, all my stuff clothing-wise was just stolen. I literally have just what's on my body. Um, if you have, like, anything you were going to give to Goodwill, if you wouldn't mind bringing it to a show just so I could like have some extra items, that'd be amazing. And people totally came through in the best wow. way. And I got some of the coolest shit that I still have today. I am like, a. this really spurred my addiction to vintage band tees. I had had like a yeah. select few cool yeah. ones, but people brought me some of the absolute coolest vintage band shirts that they were like, I just never wear this. If you'd like it, you can have it. And since then I have, I've become Martin and I are like insane collectors wow. and way too much money, like hunting down specific ones. But that's really where that got started. But people, I could not be more grateful for our fans at that time. Cause it, it was sweet. They're mostly dudes. So I was wearing like jeans that were like tied together with like a shoelace. Yeah. And like oversized shirts but you know what it right. was awesome so that's so I wasn't cool naked. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I didn't know. That's one that got, that's a big one that got away. I would say, I mean, Jesus Christ, that's, that's yeah, awful. It wasn't gear. I would, if my base had gotten, if something ever happens to that yeah. base that I have, I would, would be It's so it. sentimental. It's so it's sentimental. It's so sentimental. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's like everything. Yeah. Well, and it's that vintage t-shirt market, Jesus Christ, at one point, you know, because I live with Cecilia, um, I, I know about the vintage market of, you know, of yeah. clothing as much I never knew before, but holy shit, that has gone insane. And it's like oh the, sh God. the shirts I bought then, you know, I see like a, a, a master puppet shirt from 87, which I had, or a corrosion mm -hmm. conformity shirt, all that stuff. And it's like, the prices are bananas. And especially there's that one place, I don't know if it's still there, but it's on Melrose in LA and it was just band tees. It's just vintage band tees. Oh yeah. Holy shit, the prices are insane now. The prices are bonkers, and I have paid definitely so much for I some band shirts that I was like, I've been looking for this one for years, and I had just have to pull the trigger and buy it. I consider it like art collecting. It totally sense. is. 
And it's like cool band history because I only want the authentic ones. I don't want any reprints and you have to know who you can shop through that's trusted. Um, yeah. I really love there's an Instagram store. It's called jerks.store, I think is the handle. Um, but he has some of the most amazing ones I've ever seen. And yeah, we, wow. we have a true addiction. I, I, if I showed you my closet, I have them all folded and the stack is like, wow. Like he, I'd I love to see that. Probably getting into the hundreds. I have wow. vintage band shirts. I have some good ones. I, I, you know, I, I also have a bunch of reprints, but, and yeah. you know, that, that fine son are uh, feel so good here in Austin, which I'm sure, you know, they used to be fine. So then gentlemen, they do such cool stuff too, with like, you know, limited prints and stuff. Yeah. But, my last like tour with Guar, I grabbed a hoodie and that was now 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I've just had it. And Sassy was like, uh, my wife, Sassy, for those who don't know, um, she just, she wears it all the time. She's like, this is so cool. And I didn't realize that it like, oh yeah, that's a vintage hoodie now. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was, we made it on that tour and I've seen it, you know, it's, she show me, you know, where it's expensive now. I'm like, I didn't even think yeah. about that. You know, it's crazy. That's Crazy. cool though. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky for her. Yeah, I know. I, I, she's commandeered it, so there's that. For um, my wedding gift from Martin, he got me a Sonic Youth shirt that I, has been like my holy grail shirt that I've wanted whoa. forever, looked for, and I've always, anytime I've seen it, it's been a, a like it, too ridiculously priced. Like, I think I saw it once for like over five thousand dollars and i was like I, I just can't that's like way wow. crossing the line for me yeah. <laughs> like, um i'm in a shoegaze band i'm not making that much money yeah. but um he knew that i had been looking for this specific one and there was someone in japan that was selling it and he had to get they wouldn't ship it to the u.s and he had to get someone in japan to go and pick it up what and, Ship it to him. Yeah, he had a friend there who like had to go wow. run this errand and get this shirt for him. And he gave it to me the night before our wedding. And I was like, I might just walk down the aisle. And this, and this. Is so which one? What is what's the shirt? So it's the white version. It's um, it's I think they call it the hysteric glamour one. <laughs> it has all of them in space. They like have oh. their space suits on. Um, and then it says, uh, Sonic Youth in Japanese on the back. Whoa. Um, and there's a picture of Kurt Cobain wearing it when he was at, I think, William S. Burroughs house in yeah. Lawrence, Kansas. Um, and I think that picture of him wearing it made those authentic ones just shoot, shoot. sky wow. high. Um, I had a, a early 2000s reprint they made it in like a burgundy red and i had that one but i just really wanted the got, old I, white yeah, one and the he real one found he tracked it down and got it for me and i was just like this is oh the my coolest God. thing ever <laughs> well you it's like your base so you can't wear it i know i you think know? i've worn it like once and i was so scared the whole time i was like i'm going to I wore it on our wedding weekend, I think. Oh, that's good. We did like a brunch and I wore it to that. I was like, I just have to incorporate this somehow into the wedding yes. festivities. <laughs> but you get it hung on a nail or whatever. You know what I mean? I know. It's folded yeah. in like, I, I need to figure out some better way of, because all of these shirts, like I get them because I A, love the band and I B, think the graphic is so cool. Totally. And so I'm like, I wish I had some way, maybe one day if I have a really long hallway, I could just get some of them framed that that's I know I never, idea. most of them are like XXLs. So. Yeah, that's a great idea because they are art, you know, yeah. they are. Yeah. It's like, you know, you look at merchandise, I guess when bands started merchandising the sort of, and it's, it's a fairly recent thing, like in the seventies was sort of the, when it really kind of started, it would just be a tour you know, like Fleetwood Mac, 76 or whatever. Yeah. And then it really became a thing in the eighties. And so it's sort of relatively new. Um, but yeah, it is, it is art, I think. Yeah. You know, wow. Martin surprised me with one the other day. He got me a really cool meat puppets one. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. But yeah. I, what a like, cool band. I have a, some of my favorite ones are, um, I have a couple butthole surfers ones. And I think those are some of my absolute favorite graphics that I, yeah. that I have. Yeah, those. they're bananas. But those are expansive. Yeah, they are getting there, right? <laughs> Back down the old legit ones, those yeah. get really crazy. It gets up there. Like all those old eighties bands or nineties bands. It yeah. I, I I guess I was sleeping on it and then when Sassy, you know, hit me out to it, I was just like Holy fuck! What happened? Like, why? Why is it that much? You know, I get it, but you know, like shit. 
Well, anyway, well, Alex, I won't keep you much longer. It was so good to see you and to talk to you again. And I don't Great. run into you anymore. You're out in LA. We used to run into each other. I know, I know. I'm, yeah. I'll probably be back for South by. If you're okay Maybe i will be around i'm doing some stuff so i'm actually home uh, from my tour and you know uh yeah doing oh, yeah, all you that. all have just gotten home from your big my big tour. My, my big thing so that'll be fun what's next for you is uh with the side band or gringo what do you what's coming up for you so nuclear daisies is getting ready to release an album i don't know when that'll happen i think we're going to kind of trickle out a couple more singles we just released one um cool. So we're kind of working on getting music videos and stuff ready to keep trickling those out. And then hopefully I can get Elliot and Daniel in the freaking studio, but yeah. you know, pulling teeth with those dads these days. <laughs> <laughs> pulling That should be the name of the record. Pulling teeth, pulling with, those teeth dads. with dads. <laughs> with dads. All right. Well, Hey, thank you again for, for, uh, for talking and uh, so good to see you again. And yeah, uh, so fun. Yeah. thank you for having me. Of course. Absolutely. Oh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. bye. Well, there you go, folks. That was me and Alex. And uh, I love having people from Texas on. I'm from Austin. I love about you know it's it's uh, it's endearing to me. Um, you know, again, I meet a lot of folks on here and people I didn't know before, but I also it's always nice to talk to people that I do know. Um, there's that sh sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, shorthand you have with somebody that you've known for, for, for a while and, and, you know, the, the ability to commiserate a little freer, but I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. Um, I'm going to leave you here at the end with, um, some of Alex's music. Again, this is from Alex's band, uh, Ringo Death Star. And this is going to be from their Pure Mood record uh, from 2015. This song is called Guilt. And I, I, I don't think I can explain it any better. They've always struck me as if My Bloody Valentine were from Texas. Of course, they do their own thing with it. But um, if you had to put a term on it, you know, shoegaze, I guess, would be the right thing to say. Uh, offset guitars, you know, uh, things like that. I also thought that was interesting talking to Alex about her gear choices and, and man, you know, the same bass since she graduated. I just think that's that's endearing and, and awesome. I didn't get to talk to her about her amps, and I should have, but I did see on a KEXP performance she was using a Ampeg uh, micro stack. I don't know if that was from the uh, studio, but I think it's really cool if she was traveling and touring with that. I have one of those, and they're so cool. They're so much fun. Uh, I'm going to thank my sponsors here at the end, the wonderful, lovely people over at MXR and Jim Dunlop uh, for doing everything they do. Check out what they're doing at jimdunlop.com. I'm also going to thank the lovely folks at DistroKid. They're helping you get your music and your art on the streaming platforms. Uh, that's DistroKid. They're doing uh, they're doing great work and they're helping us all, folks. So check out what they're doing over at DistroKid. I will talk at you really soon. Again, uh, I'm about to leave to go to Australia, so hopefully I'll have a good things to report back about that. Um, and maybe I'll do just a solo one up here and we'll talk about gear that I'm at. I'm thinking about changing everything up and we can have a big, long, nerdy discussion about that. So stay tuned for stuff. Uh, stay tuned for more of this season. Uh, and thank you for staying tuned. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Talk soon.